entrance antiphon. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. Welcome, everyone, to this Friday's liturgy, celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Um, I know that we are here together. This is a real Mass, and real graces are coming into your homes right now. So lift up to the Lord your praise and your adoration and your thanks. And lift up to the Lord whoever you want to pray for right now. Along with your intentions, uh, my intentions for this Mass are for uh, Charles Holmes and Vernus Parrott. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O Lord, so that what was promised by the sanctifying power of your word may everywhere be accomplished through the working of the gospel, and that all your adopted children may attain what the testimony of truth has foretold. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night, while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half, and taught the word of God among them. <coughs> but when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up against Paul together and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about ready to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them out, drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Chenchere, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Our response to our psalms is simple. Alleluia today. Alleluia. Alleluia. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with the cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. Alleluia. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. Alleluia. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ had to suffer 
and to rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy, that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I've been doing catechism in a nutshell. Uh, we're on lesson number 10. Uh, if you want to go, these are just short little snippets. I love the catechism. I've always loved the catechism. I have one major complaint against the catechism. Not enough pictures. I think there's like one or two or three in the whole thing. You know, no, we like pictures. Pictures teach us a lot. Now, when I was in fourth grade, I actually purchased, uh, I had to work by clearing the setting of the table. I purchased a book called My Catholic Faith. Still is one of my favorites. It's a little bit outdated, but it is awesome. And it has lots of pictures. And as you, when you open the book, I know I put on Facebook a lot of you to, to check out that picture. Well, here's a picture I could actually print it off. That's so neat. I could print it off. Uh, but this picture, a picture is worth more than a thousand words. Look at this. Look at this picture here. I hope you can see it. If you can't, I so much apologize. But I remember as a little fourth grader looking at this picture and seeing and, and just being enthralled with it. Um, you can see, now Jackie Lawler, I want to tell you that th those aren't mailboxes there. Those are like uh, stone little dividers between the stairs going up and, be and going down. So those are th that's stonework there. You can see this one stonework here. It's kind of almost like an arrow saying, this is the point where we divide. This is our division point. And I don't think that's Jesus. I think that's just a, a, a person, uh, you know, a wayfarer. He has a staff, and he has to make a decision. The staff is symbolic of his journey. He has to make a journey, and he has to make a choice between these two places. Uh, going up to heaven, which is, the, you know, obviously this one here, or going down to hell. Now, Jackie, you mentioned um, uh, where's purgatory and all this. Well, see... You can see in this picture that as you're going up to heaven, it's on both sides, it's hard. A life following Christ is hard. And I know Ned and Jackie Bush both made the comment that the, the stairway going up um, is actually uh, uh, more narrow, and the stairway going down to hell is much more wide. And you can see the stairway going to hell is strewn with, with flowers and, and pleasantries. And it, the, the way is wide, Jesus says, that leads to perdition and to uh, condemnation. But then the stairway to heaven, it's not a song by Led Zeppelin only. Uh, it happens around long before that group. Uh, this stairway to heaven um, has, is strewn with thorns. It, it's hard. Jesus said, you will suffer in the world, but take courage. I've overcome the world. It's hard to love with the heart of Christ. It's hard to lay down your lives for one another. It's hard to live a Catholic life. But like my grandma said, it's hard to be a Catholic, to live a Catholic, but it's easy to die as a Catholic because you know you're ready to see the Lord. A little more thin, a little more, not as wide, and, it, and it's a little more narrow going up there. And again, to the purgatory question, you know, Purgatory happens on earth, and it's kind of a continuum. I'm sure that purgatory is somewhere in here towards the end of the thorns. But after we get through that purifying thing, we, uh, we come into the full presence of the Lord. The main point here is the way to heaven uh, is strewn with, you know, 
have some hardships and, and thorns, but look at the glory to come after a short little uh, set of steps. Look at the glory that's going to follow for all of eternity. And if you look at here, oh, everything, oh, I'm just so fine. I, I'm only thinking about me, and I'm indulging myself, and I'm, and I'm sinning. I'm giving myself into sin. The truth is, uh, that doesn't really bring you joy anyway. Those are artificial roses on the way down. But then, of course, the wide way leads into hell. And at, after that, our short life, if we live that kind of life, self-indulgent, not obeying God, um, you know, we're going to end up separated from God by our own choice to walk down those stairs. God doesn't tell. God says, please choose to come up this way. Take up your cross and follow in my footsteps. Uh, so I'm going to put this picture down now and keep uh, talking a little bit more. Uh, James puts it beautifully. He says, count it pure joy, brothers and sisters, when you're involved in all sorts of trials and difficulties in your life. This makes for endurance and strength, and it makes you true, it forms you into holiness, so you're fully mature and not lacking anything. Okay, that's the purgatory of life. St. Alphonsus Liguri continues on this. I, one of my favorite sayings, he says, darkness, sickness, dryness, difficulties in this life are all the chisels with which God fashions his statues for paradise. We need these difficulties in our life to form who we are. I know even in my own journal, several years ago, I can go back to my journal like volume five, and, and, and one time I was praying, I said, Lord, I'm so weak, I'm so anxious, I'm so unable to do so many things, I'm such a sinner. And, and you know how you can hear God speak to you in prayer sometimes. I, I heard the Lord say, my son, all your weaknesses, even your sinfulness, and all your anxieties, and all these difficult moments in your life, the, the, you're going you're, you're gonna to get into heaven, not in spite of them, but because of them. He's going to review your life, and he's going to show you all the, the, the sufferings and the difficulties in your life. And, he says, and he's going to say, not in spite of them, but because of them, it caused you to be humble. It caused you to cry out to me. It caused you to turn away from yourself and to turn to me and find me. We often find God in these times. And uh, I know that has been a case for me. I, I, I thank God for those difficult times. It's a lot better after you turn to him and you come into a time of peace. And uh, of course, all this is accentuated. This is leading to the gospel today. Jesus brings this incredible analogy of a woman. He's talking to his apostles. He says, you're going to grieve for a time, but your grief will be turned into joy. You're going to suffer, but it's going to be okay. You're going to have complete joy for all of eternity. Jesus makes it very clear, and he uses the analogy of a woman giving birth. I mean, how difficult it is. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful I've never had to have that experience, and yet I've never had that privilege either, right? Uh, you mothers, you have the privilege of, of experiencing this. And Jesus says, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. But then after the baby is born, they totally forget. They totally forget all the agony and all that. Um, even though my mom told me that I was a pretty difficult birth. Uh, they forget all of that for joy that a person has been born. And that's what it's going to be like when we break into heaven. It's going to be, we're not even going to think. And Paul says, I consider the sufferings of the present to be nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Nothing. We're going to forget all of that, and we're going to just come into the joy of heaven. But you know what? I do want to make a, one last point here. Okay, you have the thorns going up, and you have the roses going down. Even with the thorns, the Lord gives us a real joy and a sense of dignity and integrity and peace that the world cannot give. Yes, he's not going to, he's going to give you, he says, peace I leave you, not as the world gives. And he says, I give you my joy, and your joy may be complete. That's not just in heaven. Even now, when we're obeying the Lord and right with God, there's no better, more joyous, more peaceful way to be. And even a woman, when she's giving birth, she has times in between contractions, right, where there's peace. It's not all just hard giving birth, hard labor. You know, it's also, there's times of relaxation, in times of relief, in times of fun, and times there's a joy. The Lord wants us to be happy too, even on this earth. Then you have the roses. Well, they're artificial roses. You know, you go out and you fill yourself with emptiness and you give yourself into to overeating, maybe sexual excess or maybe 
pride of life or bragging or materialism. And you know what? It's like the person that goes out and buys all this material stuff and after two days, it's, they're sick of it. They go, oh, this didn't bring me the fulfillment. Those are fake roses. The, even the roses, they only look like roses. So put your eyes on Jesus. Here's your choice. You have the staff. You can choose the artificial way that leads to hell or the real way of obedience that has suffering but even joy that leads to heaven. And this is your choice. This is my choice. We rejoice in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. We now bring to the Lord our prayers and our intentions. That the Lord may heal the wounds of his church and bring justice and healing to her members. We pray to the Lord. That the peace of Christ may overpower nations in conflict. We pray to the Lord. That God may relieve the suffering of all who struggle with disease or ill health. And especially bring relief from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. That Christ may bring consolation to those in our community who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray to the Lord. That those who have died may experience eternal life with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. And we bring our prayers, praying for a life from the moment of conception to natural death. We pray uh, for all of the deepest prayers of our hearts right now. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we ask that you would hear these prayers and bless us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Administer this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Reed of Cascia, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. 
Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. At this time we make a holy, uh, spiritual holy communion, spiritual communion, inviting the Lord into our hearts. Jesus, we believe in you. We know that you are with us in our homes right now. We receive you, Lord Jesus, into our hearts, and we give our hearts back to you. Bring us in to a wonderful union with you, and through our union with you, bring us into union with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the beautiful embrace of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a reminder that uh, Mass, uh, Sunday Mass, is at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we are so grateful for 88.1 Catholic Radio, which brings it out to a huge uh, amount of listeners. And uh, so stay tuned on 88.1 or do live streaming with us at 9. And uh, immediately after the Mass, I will continue to play songs and minister to you till 10 o'clock. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.